Okay, so because I want to run this flow on a schedule, uh, i.e. I want to check it, let's say, every hour to make uh, to see if there's any emails there that haven't been processed, uh, I can either search for schedule or I can search for occurrence and I will have my recurrence trigger. Now, once I configure this, I can select my frequency. So I can say that I'm going to run this every hour and I can also select the interval. So I'm going to select this as every one hour. Obviously, there are more options there that you can explore if you need to. So when my flow runs, I now need to go and have a look at my inbox, first of all. And I'm just going to hit add new step. I'm going to filter down using Office 365 Outlook. And I'm going to get and I'm going to get emails. So make sure you select emails rather than email. So this one will look for several emails rather than one individual. So I can select where the folder is, whether it's my inbox or whether it's a subfolder. Now, because my um, my inbox admin in my personal account is next to useless, I'm going to go and select one of my subfolders. So I'm going to select the flow community. I can determine whether I only want to return unread messages or whether I want them to be read. I can select either include or attachments or not, and I'm just going to leave that no. Um, but what I'm really interested in is a search query. So the search query is where I can build up a query to find emails that I want, very similar to what I uh, can do if I search for an email in Outlook. So for example, if I want to look for an email that's been received at a specific time, I can use the, the column received. Uh, I'm interested in something that's older than an hour. So I'm going to say whether received is less than or equal to. Uh, and now I need to put some dynamic content in there. I need to figure out what the, uh, the time was an hour ago so that I can look for emails that are older than that. And to do that, I use an expression. So I'm going to build up my expression a little bit at a time and just try and explain what's going on here. So I'm going to start off by getting my uh, the, the date time stamp of um, what it is now. So at the moment it's 2111 here. Yeah, so I'm going to go uh, UTC now. So that will get my time in UTC. But I'm in the UK. So my uh, so the UK time for me at the moment is actually one hour ahead of UTC. So to ensure that I'm not uh, that I'm not skewing my results, I'm going to let's just put a space in here for a moment so you can see the IntelliSense working. Uh, so I'm going to convert from UTC I'm going to convert the UTC now time which is a, a, an hour behind where we are in the UK and I'm just going to put in there GMT standard time the full list of um, URL uh, sorry uh, time zone descriptions uh, can be found on the Microsoft site and I'll, put, uh, I'll post that link afterwards so GMT standard time and let's close that off so now that will return the time of 21 12 as it is now but that's the time now I now need to figure out the time one hour ago now everything that I've returned so far is of type string. So if I go and I always tend to use add hours uh, because that allows me to uh, enter a string as the actual date time stamp that I want to do some math, uh, maths on. There, you will see that there's a subtract hours, uh, but that actually requires a date time data type to be put into into here. So I find there's a lot more flexibility by using uh, as hours. Okay, so I'm gonna add hours across all of that, what I've just done. Uh, but I'm obviously not looking to add hours, I'm actually looking to take away. So my addition is gonna be minus one. So that will then give me one hour before I actually run, uh, one hour before the current time. So I'm going to hit OK on that. So that's now my expression within my action. I'm going to now go and add another step and I'm going to send emails this time. 
and I'm going to use send an email v2. Now the reason why I use v2 rather than v1 is because that allows me to format the, uh, the body of my email without actually having to type in my own HTML. Uh, so I'm going to tell it who it's going to send it to. So it's going to send it to me. Um, so give it a subject. Emails processing has failed and then I can give it a body. So the following emails failed to be processed. And let's give it some basic information. So I'll give it the subject and let's give it a rec the received. Uh, so this time I'm going to put some dynamic content in there, which means that I'm going to take something that was output from my get emails action and I'm going to use it in this send email action. So I'm going to use subject, I'm going to select it from here. Okay, and notice that it's now put this into an apply to each. That means that if I have several emails come back, it will process each one and it will send me an email for, uh, for each failure. And I'm going to then just select one additional thing, which is my received time. Okay, so if I hit save on that, so I've now got the basics of my flow. I can test it. I'm going to perform the trigger action. Let's save and test. I'll hit run flow. So we can now see what happens. So I can see that my recurrence has fired, my get emails has fired. I can see that my in my search query, the received is one hour ago, yep, that's right. So it's 21.15 when I fired this. So it's looking at anything that's older than 20.15. And I can see down here that I've got one email there. And if I look at my apply to each, I can see that this has run once. So it's showing one of one. If I had seven, it would show one of seven, two of seven when I click next and so on. There's the body of my email and that's all gone through. So now, or in a few seconds, I'll receive an email into my inbox to say that that email has failed to process.